Sergeant and Mrs. Smith, you are going to love this house. Is that a tub in the kitchen? There's no field manual for finding the right home. But when you do, USAA Homeowners Insurance can help protect it the right way. Restrictions apply. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today, I'm going to be talking about what women think about angry men, specifically their husbands who are angry. Uh, Please do subscribe, though, before we get into that. My most recent subscriber episode is about anxiety in kids and how that relates to untreated parental anxiety, because, of course, there's nature and nurture, and that touches on both. All right, so um, a lot of guys think that being angry means that you're like a real bad, you know, bad dude, like you are, like in a good way, (laughs) like that you are, you know, strong and aggressive in a positive way and alpha. In fact, it's like the number one thing that women don't like when they come to couples counseling or when they talk to me individually. I've talked about this in terms of the when women hate arguers or women hate arguers and women hate difficult and defensive, just all sorts of like uh, podcasts and posts like that. So what women think about angry men is A, they get scared and or B, they get um, uh, irritated, you know, like so, so it depends how angry he is and what he does. Of course, if he's violent, he's throwing things, he's screaming and cursing at them, they get scared, even if they know that he's not going to ever hit them. It's a fight or flight response that evolutionarily a smaller, weaker female organism has in reaction to a larger, you know, threatening male organism. Like this is why your wife, you know, uh, would, would get scared if a man stared at her and leered at her on the subway. It means he could rape her. Is, or, you know, is, she, is he probably going to rape her? No. You know, like every man that doesn't stare at you doesn't do anything to you, you know, but doesn't do something. But uh, still, your body reacts as though he will. That's an evolutionary response. So the first thing that most men don't understand, because if they don't think of themselves as a violent, dangerous guy, because they think of themselves as kind of an, you know, an ethical, good person, they don't understand how their wife is, her whole nervous system is thrown into fight or flight when he yells, screams, curses, etc. So, um, and, and even if she does it, you know, like she could yell and um, he could you know, hate it and think she's being a real bitch and she could be. But the reality is, is usually he isn't scared for his life, nor does his nervous system think that he should be scared for his life. His, his, his body isn't reacting as though he might die. And so hers is. And a lot of guys don't understand that. Also, when they scream at the kids, it's the same kind of thing. And I did a whole podcast about this called why you don't get late on nights that you've screamed at the kids or something. And this is because her protective mama bear evolutionary drive to protect her kids goes into high alert and she perceives you as an attacker of her babies and this makes her hate you and want to kill you and that's evolutionary. And she may not do anything except get the kids into another room um, or roll her eyes at you or or something or eventually leave you. But she, it, it, what she's feeling internally is that you're an attacker, as though you're a tiger who came out of nowhere and is attacking her children, which is giving her an adrenaline rush and not in the good way that you want to cultivate. Um, what do I mean by irritated? Sometimes she just looks at it like a tantrum. So if you've done it enough that she no longer has this fight or flight response because she's been habituated to it, then uh, she's just like, here he goes again with another tantrum. And that's, um, you know, equally as bad for the marriage because she's looking at you like a baby, you know, and in part she's doing this because um, you are literally like you have no self-control and she associates that with the children. And also it's because, again, she's become habituated. You, you storm around all the time. So now even her nervous system, even though it's wired evolutionarily to respond as though you're attacking her, she knows you're not going to. She's become inured to it. And she's just like, uh, looks down on it. She's just like, here's another baby stomping around. And so this isn't good either because you may be angry for real life reasons and she's not going to take you seriously even remotely because you're always storming and and stamping and huffing and puffing. And and that is not, it it just is, starts to seem like your general personality. Now, of course, there's the fact that it is a large part of your general personality. There are not people who are angry for years and storming and huffing around and yelling and whatever because it's not part of their personality. 
right? I mean, it, it, she can't be so bad as to cause you to have a different personality. And this is something I say to both women and men. When women are like, I'm depressed because of my husband, I'm like, you're depressed because from everything you tell me, you got a family history of depression, you know, and marital uh, stress can exacerbate it, but it's not like every woman in your situation would be depressed. Some of them would not. Some of them would be like, fuck him, I'm leaving him. Or some of them would be like, fuck him, I'm living a parallel life. Or some people would really throw themselves into work and the kids and their hobbies. I mean, not everybody, and I talk about this all the time, you got to picture the bell curve. You know, there, there, there is a whole range of distributions to how people would respond to your partner. And yours is not the only one, obviously. No, logically, it's not. So you can never blame your partner for your personality and, and your patterns that if you're honest, pre predate your partner. So if you're angry and storming around and huffing and puffing, almost a thousand percent you can associate this to ways that you've acted at other stressful times in your life and or to the feedback that you even received as a child. You know, that, that you had anger issues or that you could be irritable or negative or take things personally, et cetera, et cetera. So what women really think about angry men is get me away from this, either emotionally or physically, and they retreat. And of course, if the man feels that one of the reasons he's angry is because he doesn't get enough affection, then this is going to go terribly because he's going to become more of a pursuer while she becomes more of a distancer, et cetera, et cetera. And over time... The, you know, like anger doesn't make a woman into an avoidant person. She was probably, you know, always had an avoidant attachment style, but it certainly exacerbates it. So bidirectionally, you are exacerbating one another. Her avoidance is exacerbating your anger. So, so preoccupied attachment um, generally comes out in men like anger. So with women, they could be crying and, and you know, uh, saying, don't leave, don't, don't leave me so much. Do you even love me? You know, I don't even think you love me. Do you even think I'm pretty, right? Men don't do that a lot. There's not a lot of crying and saying, do you really think I'm handsome, you know? Instead, men will become controlling and angry. You know, you only think about yourself. You never look up from your phone. Where are you even going tonight? Why are you wearing that? Uh, you know, you seem to have time for everything but me, you know? So they come off in more of an attacking tone because anger is a much more comfortable emotion for males than sadness, vulnerability, and... Um, you know, uh, verbalizing insecurity, whereas women, that is more of their wheelhouse is, is expressing vulnerable emotions. So they will say things that are more like what they really think, like, I'm scared you're going to leave me versus where are you going tonight? You know, which is what more of a preoccupied attachment man. So preoccupied attachment men generally act more controlling than vulnerable, you know, even though the controllingness is coming from a place of vulnerability. So, um, then, of course, that exacerbates the woman wanting to push away and completely isolate and get the hell away from him because he's micromanaging, controlling, paranoid, accusatory, etc. So what do you do if you have these anger issues then? Well, therapy is a really good good starting place because if you're angry at uh, people on the regular, which you may say is just your wife, it's never just your wife, it's going to be your kids, it's going to be people at work, it's people that cut you off when you're driving. So if you struggle with anger, it's usually because you feel a deep-rooted sense of insecurity or inferiority. And women never perceive this as alpha because instinctively they know what it is, you know, I mean, I mean, th think about it, like a, a guy that in a worst case scenario um, beats his wife. Everybody knows that guy's fucked up. Everybody knows, you know, everybody knows, like if they think about it for one second, that that guy probably got beaten as a kid, you know? So it's like nobody ever thinks that like that guy had like a good reason to beat his wife, you know, nobody ever thinks that or a good reason to like, you know punch his kid, right? No, never. You never have a good reason to abuse your child, right? But everybody can, can imagine you don't do that without a history of having that done to you. So women pick up on this. They pick up that it's from insecurity, deep insecurity. And, uh, you know, then how could it possibly be alpha, right? So anyway, in therapy, what you want to work on is that deep-seated insecurity. You want to figure out where it came from, what in your family of origin led you to feel this way. Likely, you know, it was the fact that you didn't get treated so well and or you were modeling on a low self-esteem parent. And so then, and a parent who would always act like everybody was out to get them, paranoid and thinking they were always kind of a professional victim is what I call it. And so if you grew up with this victimized feel, 
because either you were victimized or you modeled on on somebody who acted victimized, then as you go through life, you're always thinking everybody's stepping on your toes, even when they're not, even when they they aren't even aware of your existence, you know, and they're just like, let's say, trying to get home quickly. You think they're specifically cutting you off because they thought you were a mark and they went ahead of you on purpose. And now you're going to show them that they shouldn't have cut you off, you know, and some people even follow the car and scream, et cetera. You know, so if you struggle with anger, you got to figure out the root of it. And that can honestly, in and of itself, really, really change your frame because then it turns into a learned behavior. You understand it and, and, and that helps you kind of slow down in the moment and realize it's kind of like when you teach people um, the HALT acronym, you know, are you like hungry, angry, lonely, or tired? Or no, it was hungry, anxious, lonely, or tired. And so these are the times when people use, like if they're substance abusers and they're, you know, trying to be clean and then they're thinking, when are, when am I going to be most triggered? When am I most risky times? It's when you're, you know, uh, hungry, anxious, lonely, tired, right? And so then when they figure that out, then it doesn't seem anymore to be so um, unpredictable. Like your urges to use aren't going to come out of nowhere. You know, it's going to be at these times and then maybe you can do things so that you don't get hungry, anxious, lonely, tired, you know, with the same frequency. You know, you could pack yourself snacks. You can make sure to see friends. You can get eight hours of sleep if you know that it's super important to helping you not relapse, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it's the same kind of thing, by the way, for anybody exploding or doing something bad in any way. So, of course, you're likelier to be have an anger outburst when you're also hungry, anxious, lonely, tired, et cetera. But like also knowing why you do it in terms of a macro, like longer term frame. So I did it because I saw it done. You know, I, I did, I, I am being angry now because I used to have my mother who yelled at me a lot or a father who would beat my mother is why I want to, you know, hit my wife. And instead I just yell at her, you know, just in quotes, right? So so understanding the origin of why you act a certain way is extremely important to giving you a, a larger frame and a deeper understanding of it, which can, in fact, stop you from doing it in the moment because you're aware of it. It no longer seems like I'm mad at my wife because she's a real bitch. Instead, it's like I'm mad at my wife because I always saw my father mad at my mother. Uh, maybe my wife is being a real bitch, you know, too, but that's not really why I am acting different in this way than maybe many other men would act toward my wife because you start to see the whole picture like yeah okay maybe maybe your wife said something annoying right but there's if there was a hundred guys would they all pick up something and throw it certainly not you know and of course if you're in a situation where somebody's picking up shit and throwing it and you're a woman or a man listening to this you should get out of that situation that's abusive and the yelling constantly or name calling cursing etc is also abusive and you really so i mean this podcast is toward the person who's doing it and the man in particular who's doing it but if you are in this situation with a spouse like this this is immediately you if if of course you feel in any way endangered you got to get out and bring get the kids out too but you need to really push for therapy like in an ultimatum kind of sense because your kids are learning how to act like this and they'll either be the one who does it or the one who cowers and neither one is the role that you want them to have in their you know future relationships but back to the people that I'm talking to which are the angry people themselves uh, understanding where this comes from can help a lot understanding also your triggers can, can help you to avoid those triggers. And if you are constantly angry in, in your marriage, understanding your relationship toward women, what you learned about women, what you learned about relationships, how to empathize with your wife, who you may see as some sort of an opponent, you know, and an and, uh, aggressor, if that's how you were trained to think of women or as partners in relationships. And also, after you work on yourself, oh, and of course, by the way, the relationship with the therapist is another place where you can practice different sorts of communication skills because that's an extremely important part of therapy is what goes on in the room. So the therapist hopefully will have strong boundaries and and not allow you to demean or berate them as you may want to do as the relationship progresses because you have anger issues. And then when you are in real time, when you learn a different way of interacting in therapy, 
because unlike your wife, who has a lot of skin in the game and is terrified of you, as I've described, or at least needs to raise kids with you, the therapist can keep strong boundaries, you know? And so then you can learn another way of interacting with somebody who does not allow you to talk to them in, in a bad way. And so you have to figure out with the therapist different ways of communicating. And then those you can bring into your intimate relationship. And then, of course... Couples counseling can really, really help because there aren't a lot of people that work with high conflict couples, but there are some, you know, and and you got to find them and you got to kind of make yourself open to learning what they teach you in terms of alternate communication skills. Um, and those can be learned. I've helped a lot of people reduce the level of conflict in their relationship, you know, through insight-oriented um, psychotherapy as well as literal skills training. Because if you were raised in a house where everybody's yelling at each other like a lunatic all the time, you have no idea how to communicate other than that, truly. You may be so smart, like in all other aspects, but you literally have no idea of an alternative response if you feel that you are being, that you're, uh, being ignored or your your boundaries are being violated in some way or you're being condescended to than to rage. And there are many other ways to do that, including, you know, directly and calmly stating your position, which so many people think would never work until they try it. But anyway, I hope that this was um, useful to at least some of you. And always, if you feel that you're in a situation, of course, where you are in danger, then you you need to get out. And in a in a real, of course, situation where somebody is, is raging at you, then, of course, you should be calling 911 and, and, and getting out of the house. But this is more of the situation what I'm talking about is more yelling and that that sort of conflict, you know, because um, that is more of what I see in couples counseling is people who just do not understand that there is no way for their wife to respect them if they are a yeller. All right, uh, I'll talk to everybody soon. Have a great day, guys.